How's it going YouTube? I'm your host for this video, Landon Dallas. Alright, so there's a lot of people who have potentially million dollar ideas, but people rarely act on them. But then there are a bunch of entrepreneurs who act on every idea that they've ever had, increasing their chances of making a dumb idea into a great one, which can also turn into a hefty profit. So you know what? Let's take a look at the top 10 dumbest ways people became rich. I, I wish I was on this list. I just quickly want to give a shout out to Grade Miners, our sponsor for this video. I part up with them because I feel like you guys can benefit. Grade Miners was founded with the aim of helping US students who struggle with writing their academic papers. For me, English is my worst subject. I don't know why. I try so hard, but I fail. So this would have been very helpful for me. You work with expert writers online to help you succeed in school. You have 24-7 support, so even for those late nights of writing essays, you can work with someone to help you out. Grade Miners helps you get the grades you want. If this is a service that sounds interesting to you guys, I'll put a link in the description below. And right now, you can even earn $50 for every friend you refer to Grade Miners. Okay, so now let's jump right into this video. Santa Mail started us off at number 10. A man started his company which sells personalized letters from Santa Claus all over North America and they even postmarked it from the North Pole to give them more of an authentic feel. He charged the people $10 for each letter and he sent over 200,000 letters since the start of his business, which makes him a multi-millionaire. Coming in at number 9, we have sharing people's secrets. Frank Warren started a business called Pulse Secrets where he would ask people to send him postcards with their secrets on the back. After gathering up all the secrets, he turned them into books. And he's consistently been on the best sellers list 5 times. Excuses Generator comes in at number 8. You'd be surprised, but there are a lot of people in the world who would pay a company to come up with a creative excuse to get you out of something that you don't want to do. I wish this was around when I was in school because I needed excuses to not do homework. These excuse notes looks as though they came from a hospital or a doctor, so you're actually committing fraud. I don't recommend you guys doing it at all, but they're a very successful business earning themselves millions of dollars. Stumbling into number 7 is Thrift Store Gold Mine. An official copy of the Declaration of Independence that was made in 1820 was found in a thrift store ready to be sold for under $2.48. Apparently, there are 201 copies copies printed and only 31 have been found so far. Michael Sparks is a pretty lucky guy. He decided to buy it and he sold it for $477,000. Mistaken identity comes in at number 6. A casino in Cincinnati, Ohio committed a million dollar mix up. The casino mistakenly gave the wrong man a 1 million dollar cash prize because he had the same name as the actual winner. Once the casino moved to the secondary verification process, they've realized that they have given the prize money to the wrong person. So they awarded both men 1 million dollar each and each of them became millionaires overnight. Next up at number 5 is Pizza.com. Chris Clark registered the domain Pizza.com in 1994 in hopes that the internet would take off and could strike a deal with the pizza company in the future. He maintained the domain for $20 a year for 14 years until one day he realized that both pizza and the internet became a huge commodity. The second he put his domain name up for auction, almost every pizza company in the world placed bids on it and he actually sold this domain for $2.5 six million dollars. Bring a t-shirt slides into number four. Jason Sadler set up a website in 2009 that would allow companies to pay him for wearing their branded t-shirts. The cost of his service would be different for every day of the year. For example, January 1st would cost the company around one dollar. January 2nd would cost about two dollars, so on and so on. He made $83,000 in his first year for literally putting on different t-shirts every single day. Then in 2010, he doubled his price and quadrupled his income. Historic baseball bounces into number three. Phil Ozerski became a rich man when he accidentally caught Mark McGuire's 70th home run baseball. After he caught the ball, officials tried to pressure him into handing it over in exchange for some signed merchandise, but he refused. Three and a half months later, he auctioned off his baseball and it sold for over $3 million. Not bad for having a baseball just fall into your lap. Just imagine $3 million pouring on in. Next up, number two is Pet Rock. Yeah, that's right. People actually bought these things. The idea the idea of selling a, a rock, it sounds pretty ridiculous, but we're living in a world with ridiculous
ridiculousness, but one man figured out a way to sell them. Gary Dahl sold his rock for $3.95 on a bed of hay, and each sale made him a profit of about $3. I don't know why he's spending the 95 cents on, on what, just go to the beach pick up a rock. He sold these hassle free pets with the training manual and a cardboard box that looked like a pet carrier. These rocks were an instant hit. You guys won't believe this, they made him $15 million in the first six months. I mean, is this real life right now? People are buying pet rocks? Okay, Wacky Wall Walker falls into number one. I'm not sure what I'm talking about, but take a look at this. Oh. Uh. These ridiculously gooey toys quickly became one of the biggest fads of all time, and within just a few months, more than 240 million units were sold, which netted the creator about 80 million dollars. Huh. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys all when I become rich.